Good evening. Ni hao. Konbanwa. Sawadika. My name is Viranut Tolurakun. Some of you might be wondering why I'm greeting you in four languages. The reason is simple. That's because I speak these four languages fluently. And I am sure that almost all of you in this auditorium can speak at least two languages. So, can you give me a show of hands? Who can speak at least two languages? See, my guess was almost correct. Almost everyone can. But I can assure you that as a Thai, acquiring these four languages of almost different roots didn't come by easily or without sacrifices. I want to start off by telling you a story of a seven-year-old girl who was tricked by her father, her own father, into boarding a plane from Thailand to Singapore. He told her that they would be flying to Singapore for holidays. And of course, she believed him. That day, when they arrived, he took her to a stranger's place, whom he claimed was her friend. And he left her there for the night, with a promise that he would come back for her the next day. When morning came, she waited, but he didn't come. She got her phone call from her father, saying that he only called to bid goodbye because he had to go back to Thailand. Can you imagine what she felt, how she felt? She was lost. She did not understand what was happening. And of course, she was wondering why it had to be her. After the phone conversation ended, she staggered back to her bedroom and stared at her own reflection in the mirror, trying to hypnotize herself that she had to get a grip, to pull herself together and to move on. Actually, what her father intended was to give her a chance to acquire the two most universal languages in the world. He had a vision that English and Mandarin would be indispensable in her future. Very far-sighted, indeed. But did she know that? No, she didn't. So, even if she did not know what her father's true intention was, she decided to change her feeling of doubt and fear into trust and courage, believing that the decision must have been made to her best interest. However, life wasn't easy, life wasn't a bit of roses for that seven-year-old girl, having to live almost 900 miles away from home. So the first few months on that island were the worst days in her life. Hardship, according to Cambridge English Dictionary, it defines hardship as something that causes difficult or unpleasant conditions of life or suffering. What is your definition of hardship? To adults, maybe. It's the inability to pay your bills. To the teachers, maybe. It's the anxiety of not being able to grade the papers in time, to submit it before a deadline. For students or for kids,
Maybe it's being unable to play their favorite games or watch a favorite movie because they had to study for exam. That can be hardship. It varies, I guess. But for this seven-year-old girl, her definition of hardship was not being able to understand anything that the people surrounding her were saying. Her definition of hardship was not being able to have the two persons she trusted most in her life by her side. But, but then she looked back and she thought, well, she was helpless and she, of course, didn't need anyone to rub it in. Yet, her form teacher then did a great job at underlining that fact by telling her right in the face, in front of all her classmates, that she was good for nothing, <clears throat> that she was unfit to study in the same class with her classmates at that time. At that point of time, she felt that she was humiliated, she was hurt, and also worthless. But she had two choices to make. One was either to be victimized by those harsh words and let those hurtful feelings eat her up, devour her, or she could have just become a fighter, run in the opposite direction. She chose the latter. She chose to fight. She chose to study harder, much, much harder than all her classmates, and eventually she was able to catch up and even fare better than her classmates. I can guarantee that this, is, this story is 120% true because that seven-year-old girl is standing right in front of you right now. So, today, I really feel that I need to thank that form teacher for being my source of hardship, for being my source of motivation, which helped me discover my real strength. And it pushed me forward. After that, life went by easily for me because I thought learning was actually fun. And another opportunity came by when I had to go on a homestay in Japan to study Japanese. Again, you guessed it, it was my father's idea. He had this vision that learning another Asian language would really benefit me in my future life. Well, I guess he was right in his way. So, I... It was different than the time that I was tricked to go to Singapore. Because what? I was informed, first. Second, it was because I was ready and prepared to face the change and also to welcome the chance I was given. It seems like I'm the ideal daughter that any parents would dream of having, right? Obedient, compliant, but that's not exactly true. The true thing is that I was actually very much attracted to Japan even before I was given the chance. As you can see, that's this anime, manga, comics. I'm sure if you, are, you were born in my generation, you would have known of Sailor Moon, Doraemon, Dragon Ball, and lots, lots more. And this one, this device, Sony Walkman. Probably the kids nowadays, children nowadays wouldn't know what it is. What, what is a Walkman? But in my time, it was the coolest invention. And I believe that the faculty and the parents would know what I am talking about. And of course, Tokyo Disneyland. Who wouldn't love this paradise 
To me, Japan was paradise. So I quickly grabbed, jumped at the opportunity to go. Although my motive wasn't entirely pure, I started to enjoy the learning process, and I tried to exploit every opportunity I had in order for me to practice and brush up on the language. Until one day, I actually discovered my passion for the language. And my passion did not fade even when I came back to Thailand. So I, it was clear to me that I would pursue my higher education in Japan. That's why around a year before I complete my bachelor's degree, I applied for Japanese government scholarship, for which I passed. And I went to Japan with that scholarship. Actually, with or without that scholarship, I was determined to go anyway. In Japan, not only did I get myself a master's degree, I actually met someone who eventually became my husband. And, well, until today, he is still my husband. And together, <laughs> we have two kids. One is nine, one is 12. So that's what I gained from my experience in Japan. Fast forward a few years, my paths crossed with many people from all walks of life. I believe we don't meet people by accident. Our paths must cross for one reason or another. So one path leads to another, and somehow those has opened up opportunities which knock on my door and I open up to them. And today, I have become the founder of a foreign language service agency, the owner of two enrichment centers for children, a lecturer on Japanese communications and intercultural management, and a lifetime job as a mother of two. The early childhood experiences that I have taught me that I should embrace changes, to be open to challenges, and never stop learning. Of course, life is full of its ups and downs. Sometimes you need to cross the line, push yourself a little bit, or, or even switch to your survival mode, like what I did when I was seven years old. But it also means that you could perceive things differently, to perceive your setbacks, your difficulties as something that you could overcome if you are motivated. So this is my message to you. It may sound cliche, but it is so true. You must be content, but never be complacent. You must be thankful, but not take things for granted. In this digital era, it's just so easy to get lost in your own little world. It's so easy to be obsessed with the number of likes on Facebook and on Instagram. It's super easy to complain of Bangkok traffic especially when you work here, study here, on this Durantung Road. So we often take life for granted. I really would like to take this opportunity to maybe provoke you a little bit in whether you want to take life for granted and let what you have been granted be taken away, or you could appreciate what you have, treasure them, and make a difference. Embrace on the change, so that you can embark on a new journey to create new successes. I myself have learned to be grateful. I'm grateful to the seven-year-old girl for trusting and believing in my father 
without whom I wouldn't have become what I am today. Unfortunately, he's no longer here with me, and I cannot thank him in person anymore. So, I would like for you to take a moment to be grateful to yourself, to be thankful for the education that you have been granted, for employment, for anything that comes to your life, for the people and friends in your life, and most of all, this is a message to well, students mostly, to your parents, whom have given you the opportunity of life. Thank you.